Have you ever wondered how spaceships get those amazingly intricate details? And what stops them from being just a confusing mess on screen? Now, if you just want to know how to make these things in Unreal, just jump forward to the tutorial. There's a chapter marker down below. So what am I talking about? George Lucas called them Greeblies, Ron Thornton called them Nernies, and some people say that it was always just an extension of the art of kit bashing, that is using pre-made parts to add detail on models used in VFX for films. These details were actually tiny bits of other models, cars, tanks, or rockets. They gave the spaceships a sense of scale and realism and as Adam Savage said, helped to tell the story of the film's world. When 3D came around, kit bashing remained the art of combining pre-made 3D parts together to make something new, but Greeble started to become the term for creating this kind of detail, but using subdivision modifiers with displacement maps, rather than combining existing geometry. I don't remember where I first heard the term Greeble, but I definitely associate it with displacement maps and just being a way to add a heap of detail really quickly. I remember also seeing the term used for stamps in sculpting programs. And I guess when I was learning it, it was a way of modeling without actually having to create hard surface details. Modeling using textures. In motion design, we love shortcuts like this. But you gotta beware, because they're so easy to create, they can very easily overwhelm a viewer if you don't use the principles of design. The key to effective Greeble use lies in balance and purpose. If you've heard of Gestalt theory, one of the principles is that if you group objects together, um, you start to perceive them as a whole rather than individual objects. So it's better to start off with the whole, the silhouette of the object. This is what viewers are going to recognize first. And then you use Greebles to add more interest within that silhouette, not define it. Think of Greebles as texture rather than form. You gotta remember that the aim of Greebles is to enhance the object's perceived complexity and scale without obscuring its primary form. Diamonds, an X, hexagons, and a sphere. This balance is what separates mastery from... So let's try and create our own. But before we get into Unreal, let's visit a website called Displacement X. Link in the description. It's a really fun website that using JavaScript and uh, a few settings uh, can create displacement maps that are decidedly greebly. First thing to do is choose your resolution, and then you can just start playing around with settings. Once you've gotten to something that you want to try, you hit render, and it'll show off what you've created. There are a bunch of settings that I'm going to leave you to try out on your own time, but once you're done fiddling with your greeblies, just come over to here, hit render, and then download. And then if you do want, you can also preview the normal and download that as well. So let's jump over to Unreal. Now, I'm gonna be using my motion graphics template because it generally has everything that you need. But if you're starting from scratch, just make sure that you've enabled the modeling toolkit. So it'll start up in a default level, but because we're starting from scratch, I've created a folder called Greebles Tutorial, and I'm just gonna right click and choose level. I'm going to call that something like L underscore Greebles, and we're going to double click on that to open it up. It'll prompt you to save it. Just say yes. Once we're inside the level, I'm just going to turn on this motion design scene. Now, you don't need to use the motion design mode, but it is handy for just this create defaults button. It'll give you a scene route followed by lights and volume and camera. And that's basically covers most of what you would need in a scene anyway. So I just generally use that as a bit of a shortcut. Once we've opened up our level and we have our defaults, we're just gonna come over to the motion design outliner here, select our camera and unlock it because we're gonna be designing into 3D. Then I'm going to choose modeling mode from this menu up here. Modeling mode brings up a whole bunch of new menus, but I'm gonna stick in the create for the moment. I'm going to double click on rectangle and I'm just going to click in the viewport once and then click accept. It'll put it randomly in a spot 
but I'll just zero it out by putting it there. And if I just select my rectangle, and then hit F to focus on it, rotate around, I'm now looking at my rectangle. Things look a little bit out of focus. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my camera, scroll down to where it says focus settings, turn on the draw debug focus plane, and we're going to adjust it until it's basically where our rectangle is so we can see what we're doing. Turn that off, come back over here, select our rectangle, and now I'm gonna to come to the deform menu. The displace is a default option here, but when you first turn it on, it'll have Perl and Noise selected. And it'll look interesting, but it's, it's not exactly what we want. I'm gonna set it to texture 2D map. Nothing will happen yet because we haven't loaded in our texture just yet. Scroll down to where the options are and underneath displacement map, just search for the name of the file that you generated from displacement X. Once that's loaded in, you'll notice that it, it doesn't quite have any of the detail that we were hoping for. Uh, that's because of the subdivisions. You can see what the mesh currently looks like if you show the wireframe. What we need to do is up the number of subdivisions by a whole bunch. And at some point, it's going to warn you that the number of subdivisions is getting a little bit high. In fact, this one doesn't let me go beyond 100. So just tick on the disable size warning and try again. But if it doesn't let you go past a certain number, in this case, it won't go past 100. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually set the intensity down to zero, hit accept, so that we're basically just left with a subdivided rectangle. And I'm going to choose displace again. And in the texture 2D map now, we're going to change the displace intensity to start off with five and immediately the subdivisions of 11, which it chose for me, looks really good. You can see all of the detail, you can zoom in, and when you adjust the focus, you're suddenly getting detail that makes it feel like it's some kind of futuristic spaceship or even cityscape. The amount of detail in there really makes you feel like it's bigger than it actually is. That looks great, so I'm going to choose accept, and now you have to wait for it to actually write the geometry out and also activate Nanite for it. This takes a little while, but honestly, I haven't actually found any other software that is better at dealing with writing out geometry from subdivision than Unreal. I don't know how it does it, but when you compare trying to bake down subdivision and displacement inside Blender with Unreal, Unreal wins hands down. Blender will crash a whole bunch more than Unreal, and I, I don't know why. It's obviously some kind of voodoo uh, involving animal sacrifice and prayers to dark gods. So now that we have a uh, displaced plane, we need to sort of bring in something that'll make it look good. So I'm gonna go back over to content browser. Let's go to back to motion design mode. And I'm going to change over this material to something that I'm gonna try and create something like I did in the intro. So I'm going to create a new material. Um, we're gonna call it M underscore shiny plastic. And this one's gonna be very, very simple. I'm going to double click on the material. I'm going to basically just promote the color, the roughness. And yeah, we'll leave that at for the moment at its defaults. And just so we can go and change this, I'm going to right click on it and choose create material instance. Leave that as normal. Select our rectangle and up here, I'm going to drag this material instance into our materials. And there we have it. Okay, so we've created a material. Um, how did I create those little lights? Well, for the moment, I'm going to create a glowing material. So let's create um, an M glowing material. Right click on it. Again, I'm just going to promote the base color to a parameter. And I'm going to, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll promote the roughness and the specular for the moment. But most importantly, I'm going to promote 
the emissive color to a parameter. And what I might do is I might just simplify it by joining the base color to the emissive color so we don't have to bother about too much else. Just to start off with, I'm going to set a default of that. And with glowing materials, the important thing is to set the value to something more than one, and that will default to glowing. So let's place some little uh, 3D shapes in there. I'm going to double click to create a sphere. Okay, that's a big sphere. So we're going to take that size of the sphere down to maybe two. Can't actually see that because it's below the greeble. So there it is. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drag our material from the content browser into here. But there's no material just yet because the primary material set is still set to simple. I'm going to change that to asset. I'm going to right click create material instance. Um, and we're going to call that yellow. Drag that in. And now we've got our glowy little sphere. And you can see that it actually casts some light on our greeble because that's true geometry now going to duplicate that a few times and I'm going to make one uh, blue and I'm going to make one pink just going to duplicate my sphere a couple of times change the material on each There we go, got our three glowy spheres. Now what I'm going to do is a Cinema 4D special, where I'm going to scatter the lights around the greeble just to provide a bit of visual interest. Back in the motion design menu, come, I'm going to come down to actors. I'm going to choose cloner actor, double click. It'll create one with the default cube and it's off there in the distance, you can see. Uh, I'm going to just shift that up a little bit, cross. I'm going to actually drag my spheres into the cloner, delete the default cube. Yep, don't worry about that. And I'm going to reduce the size of the spacing. And in fact, I'm going to change the count in Z down to one. And that has created a small grid of nine glowy balls, all stepping through as one. Instead of it doing that, what I want to do is, instead of iterate, I'm going to go to random, and I'm going to increase the number from three to, let's go with 12 by 12. Uh, we're going to, again, reduce the spacing. And I might just uh, reduce the size of these spheres. Bring that down again. And I'm going to scroll down in the cloner options to where it says range, turn that on. And now I can set the offset min to something like negative 30 and the offset max to 30. All right, so we've got that working. I'm gonna just reduce the spacing to try and fit it all onto the grid. Now we can set up camera moves across our little greeble. So for that, we just need to take our camera, drag it down into the sequencer, going to hit S to set a transform key for the first frame, Scroll to the end. I'm going to set my final keyframe. Just here. 
Now to control the camera, I'm just holding down my right mouse button and I'm using the WASD keys to fly around. And now we have a very simple camera move across our new Greeble. Just for a bit of finishing touches, let's go to the post-process volume. We're going to search for lens flares because I'm, I'm not too keen on the lens flares. I'll just turn them down a lot. And I'm going to uh, search for bloom, set the method to convolution intensity and just up the scatter dispersion a little bit. And I'm going to add a little bit of grain. And that's how you create greebles inside Unreal. Those are the main sort of techniques. One thing that's actually available to us now, as of I think about 5.2 or 5.3, is that you can animate displacement maps inside a material using Nanite. That's kind of beyond the scope of this, and it's also a little bit buggy from what I've been able to find. So yes, you can actually animate greebles or animate displacement inside a material now using Nanite displacement but there's a lot of fussing around. You gotta add entries to an INI file and I found a lot of drawbacks. Like it just doesn't look as good. There are a lot of render artifacts that I just don't feel comfortable with in a finished product just yet. But at the same time, if you want me to make a video about it, let me know. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.